Welcome back. This is part two of my two-part video on how to make a simple resin mold for casting platinum silicone. Now, if you haven't seen part one already, definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the end screen or you can just go to the channel page and find that. But in part one, we made a, a clay positive using a silicone life cast mold and brushing in monster clay into that mold to make a clay pattern. Now, a little bit different than just making the resin mold right off of that clay sculpture. We made in the first video, I made a mold off of that using platinum silicone. And the whole point of that process is my end result, what I ultimately want to be able to do at the end of this video, is be able to cast both silicone positives out of this mold as well as polyurethane skin materials out of the original platinum silicone mold. And this process allows us to preserve that original pattern. So that original clay pattern is not destroyed in this process, so that can be archived, or of course we could melt that back down in our clay pot. But also it minimizes the mess when we're making this resin mold. So more about that as we move into this part of the video. So let's get started. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, there's a lot of detailed information in this video. I try to be as concise as possible, but this is a longer tutorial. So pause the video now, go get a cold drink and get comfortable, and we'll get started. Now, I'm going to start off where I left off in the previous video, where we had finished pouring up this platinum silicone mold. This is TC5130F that I poured up in this original negative mold. And I'm going to release this with some ZIP301 mold release. Real important, you see that says non-silicone mold release. This does not contain any silicone oil, so this is a compatible mold release for casting silicone into silicone. And you want to be very thorough in your application of mold release. I like to spray this into the mold, brush it into the detail, and then spray it again. And sometimes do that a couple of times. Obviously not over spraying and creating pools of mold release, but you want to make sure that you adequately cover the inside surface of the mold and the edge, that flange. Because if you don't, silicone will bond to silicone. So you want to be real careful about that. And you'll find brand new molds have the highest chance of bonding. So if you just made this mold, you want to be extra careful. Now I'm going to weigh the clay pattern that we made in the original video, and this will give me a rough idea about how much material it will take to fill the mold. Not going to be exact, but it's close enough to get a rough idea about how much I need, which is going to be roughly 600 grams of silicone. Now for the cast, I'm going to be pouring this up in TC5110F, and this is a fast setting, that's the F, is for fast platinum silicone. This, of course, is a one-to-one -one mix ratio with about a seven-minute working time and a one-hour demold at room temperature. Of course, it has a very low mix viscosity of about 2,500 centipoise, a 5A softness, very high elongation, and also important, this responds to the 5001 thickener, so it can be used for brush-on applications, as well as it can be softened or thinned with the SC5002 silicone thinner. Now we know roughly what our part is going to take in terms of silicone, but I always like to add a little bit to that just to be safe because obviously that's not that method isn't precise when we weigh out the clay like that. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out 350 grams of part A and 350 grams of part B, giving us about 700 grams total of silicone, and that will account for any errors in calculating the mass of that original clay piece. Also, even when we know exactly how much silicone a part will take, it's a good idea to mix up a little bit more than we need because it's impossible to scrape every drop of silicone out of the inside of our mixing bucket. So real important there to always have a little bit extra just in case. Now here we're dispensing our parts A and B, and again, this can be measured out by weight or volume. Personally, I prefer weight just because I can do everything in one container, and that greatly minimizes waste later on. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of silicone pigment to this. Some of this is just for the sake of the video so it's easier to see the part that I'm making, but also when you're starting out especially and you're working with translucent silicones or clear silicone systems, adding a little bit of silicone pigment will help with your mixing because the two parts look identical. And this way you can see when you have that color mixed uniformly with no streaks, that's a good indication that you have the two parts thoroughly mixed together. 
Now, depending on your application, in a lot of instances, you could pour this without vacuum degassing. Now, the only downside to this is because we are going to be pouring a resin mold up against the surface, we don't want the risk of little micro bubbles. So just to protect against any of those little micro bubbles in our silicone, I'm going to go ahead and degas this. And always when you're degassing, look for that rise and then collapse of the silicone. And that's when you know it's ready to remove from the chamber, but it'll go through that phase where it rises, looks like it's boiling. And then when it gives up the bubbles, it will collapse back down to the original level and kind of undulate for a little bit. But real important detail there. Again, this is such a low viscosity system. There's a lot of applications you could do where you could pour this without degassing, but this is extra insurance against getting any little bubbles in our resin surface. Now, I mentioned earlier that we let that mold sit and dry with that release in it. At this point, that mold has sat for about 30 minutes, so more than enough time for any release agent residue to outgas and evaporate if necessary. And now ready to pour our silicone part. And this is one of the nice things about the 5110F. This fast system can be demolded in a lot of times right around an hour or less. If you're here in the fine state of Texas where we have plenty of heat, it's easy to demold stuff really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and check what's left over in the mixing bucket. And when I can pull that out without any issue, that's a good indication that what's inside the mold is ready to demold. Now I'm going to lay this on a piece of foam core board. I want to have that ready to go because I don't want this pattern getting dirty, especially on the back side where it's going to sit on the board when we make our resin mold. So I want to make sure I have that ready to go. So I peel this out of the mold and then put that on that foam core board to keep that clean and free of any dust on the back. So there is our pattern right out of our silicone mold. And now that we've got this pattern out, we could go to regular production of either resin parts or polyurethane rubber parts or whatever it is we want to cast in that TC5130F silicone mold. But now we're ready to proceed on to our resin molds. We got that pattern ready to go, so we're ready to build another mold box. And again, you could make this out of MDF or melamine coated plywood or even uh, sheets of plastic stock. But uh, for this size mold, a foam core board box works really well. So just cutting this out with a razor knife and foam core board and then securing that all with hot glue works great for this type of mold. But real important, make sure Sure you seal it up really well because you want to make sure you don't have any leaks when you pour your casting resin over that pattern. So now I'm going to seal that up really good with hot glue and just double check all those corner areas. Make sure there's no place where that casting resin can leak out once that's poured. Now once our box is secure, it's time to release our mold box. Now, this is a very important and very critical part of this process. So right now, you'll notice that silicone just kind of sticks in there like a suction cup. We don't have anything anchoring that to that baseboard other than just the surface tension of the silicone. So what I'm going to do is carefully peel that out. And again, you see I have another piece of foam core to sit that on just so I don't have any dust or any dirt or anything like that gathering on the back side of it. And now we're going to wax the inside of that mold box. This is a very important step. And the reason for this, if we just sprayed the inside of this box with mold release, like E236, that would work okay. But the problem is this resin will exotherm or put off heat. And that exotherm can sometimes still grab onto that mold box even through that release agent spray. So for added insurance, we're going to brush it down with some Pardol Number no. 2 paste wax. Now, part all number two will work, but I really prefer the high temp paste wax from Rexco. And that one comes in a red can. And I'm going to link that one in the video description. So when you see that discrepancy, if you pull up that product link and you see a red can, that is by design. And that high temp paste wax is just that. That can withstand higher temperatures and higher exotherm. Now, once I've let that paste wax dry for a few minutes, I'm ready to carefully put my silicone pattern in the bottom of the mold box and spray it with mold release. And this time, real important detail, I'm using E236 mold release. And this is a mold release that's designed to keep polyurethanes from sticking. 
Now, I didn't secure the silicone to the baseboard with any adhesive, but if you wanted to, you could use a little bit of silicone adhesive to stick that down. But as it is, this is almost like a suction cup, and it's more dense than the resin will be pouring over it, so I don't have to worry about it floating. So as it is, it's almost like a suction cup just stuck to the bottom of that baseboard. And now ready to pour our resin. Now for this process, we're going to be using TC-808 casting resin. And this comes in a couple of different formulas. There's a, a jet black formula, but here we're going to be using the white formula. And this is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. This is tough, impact resistant, 78D. It's not brittle. This has a very fast working time of two to two and a half minutes and a 10 to 20 minute demold. And it's a low mix viscosity of 200 centipoise, low shrinkage. And in some applications where you need to brush this up against a vertical surface, you can thicken this with the fiber thick thickener. Now, it's important to remember that polyurethane systems like this are very adhesive, so make sure you wear gloves and make sure that anything the liquid resin comes in contact with has been properly released. Also, this is a resin system that does undergo a chemical reaction, so always a good idea to work in a well-ventilated work environment. Now also remember that that part B will need to be shaken before each use, so make sure you shake up the part B before use. And here I'm measuring out two pounds of part A and two pounds of part B. Now remember, this is a fast setting resin system, so you wanna make sure you keep track of time and you move quickly and deliberately and accurately. So be ready to mix and pour your resin as soon as possible. So you see I've got my spatula there ready to mix this up. And for this, I'll be using a stainless steel spatula. And the reason for that is with urethane systems, it's always a good idea to be careful not to introduce moisture. So when you're using a wooden stir stick, not always an issue, but it is added insurance against introducing moisture into your mixture. So I'm gonna use that stainless steel spatula and you notice I've got a paper towel at the ready to clean that off before it sets. And once I have my resin mixed up, I'll be ready to pour. And typically it takes about 30 to 45 seconds of thorough mixing to have this to a point where you're ready to pour your resin. But real important, you don't want to wait around too long when you have a batch of resin this size because the exotherm or the heat that builds up off that resin can act like additional accelerator to that. So you want to be careful to get this poured out over your pattern as soon as possible so it doesn't start setting up in that mixing container. Now, if you're pouring a larger piece that needs more working time, you can always use TC804, which has a seven to eight minute working time. Now I'm gonna give it a quick blast of release agent right over the top of the mold to help break up any bubbles that come to the surface. That's more of that E236. I'm gonna spray that across the top and let that set. And again, that's pretty quick set time. So we can easily demold this in about 10 to 20 minutes. And remember, with urethane resins like this, the thicker the cross-section, the faster it's going to set up, whereas thinner cross-sections are going to be slower. Now, because this does put off a fair amount of heat, I went ahead and let this sit for about an hour just to cool down a little bit, make it a little easier to handle. And now we're ready to flip that over and remove our silicone pattern. And you see we got a nice, clean mold with just a little bit of flash that went under the edge of that foam core board. And now our silicone pattern can be popped out and used again if necessary. And now I'm just gonna do a little bit of quick cleanup with a, a little mold knife here. This is just a sharp, short knife that we can use to trim back any of those edges. You can all, also use a, a lot of other woodworking tools like a plaster rasp or a wood rasp on the edge of this and clean that up. And now our mold is ready to go. Now I mentioned in part one, you could use this on a larger scale. So this is a soft silicone pattern that I poured up with 5100, the TC5100. That's a very soft silicone, and I went with that so it'd be soft enough to pull out of this relatively complicated mold. Now for an application this size, what I'd recommend is that slower setting resin, that TC804, because that would give you much longer working time and thickening that with the fiber thick thickener. Now, when you thicken that up, you can apply that as a paste to a vertical surface. Now, because I'm applying this in two coats, the first layer I did somewhat a little bit runny, and then I came back with it even thicker and built that up from there. Now, if I was to do this over again, 
I would have actually followed this up with some BR75D because that is a much stronger resin that does not require any fiber thickener. That's a self-thickening resin. So I would have done a face coat of either the TC808 or the TC804, and then come back with a follow-up layer of the BR75D. Now, those of you interested, I'd like to cover that process some more. So any of you that uh, would like to see something about that, let me know in the comment section, and I'll do a more involved tutorial on that process. But here you see that finished mold and how that soft silicone pattern pulls right out and gives us a nice, clean resin mold ready for casting. And of course, unlike a clay pattern, we could use that silicone pattern to make more molds. Now our final resin mold, our TC808 resin mold, is now ready for casting. So to cast into that mold, we're just going to spray that with the ZIP301 mold release, allow that to dry, and then pour in our silicone. Now a few different simple serving suggestions for using this mold. The easiest approximation of human skin is going to be the TC5110 or 5110F. But those of you doing something like suture pads or things like that might want to consider the 5100 or a combination of those two silicones. But you can also use the 5130 for applications like tattoo skins where you might want a slightly firmer silicone skin material. Now, as usual, I'll post all the links to all the products that I used in the video description, so be sure to check those out. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified when I post new content. And at this point, I'm on a new schedule of posting a new video every Monday. So always check in on Mondays and I'll have new content. And on the end screen here, I provided you with links to other videos related to casting silicone. So be sure to check those out. And as always, thanks for watching.